Hey folks, we are in Australia today with a special episode of Species Report. We encourage you to use your imagination as you enjoy our video. Today we present the blue ringed octopus. The blue ringed octopus belongs to the genus Apalocalena and lives in tidal pools and coral reefs in the Pacific and Indian Oceans ranging from Japan to Australia. They are recognized by their blue and black rings on their yellowish skin. The blue ringed octopus uses chromatophores for camouflage as we can see here. It sensed my presence and became invisible. When it is provoked, the brown patches on its skin darken dramatically. It is known to be the world's most venomous marine animal, which is powerful enough to kill humans with no anti-venom. Oh my god! That guy is about to be infected. The venom is produced by bacteria in salivary glands. The neurotoxin it just produced is 100 times more powerful than cyanide, which blocks sodium channels causing motor paralysis, mo respiratory arrest, and heart failure, which just killed our human being over there, resulting in death within minutes. The blue ringed octopus swims by expelling water from his hyponome, also called the funnel in the form of jet propulsion. Like all octopuses, the blue ringed octopus has the ability to change its shape easily when, which helps it to squeeze into places much smaller than itself. You can see it squeezing over there. This helps in protecting the octopus from predators. If the octopus loses one or two arms, as in this case, it has the ability to regenerate in less than two months. The blue ringed octopus feeds on crabs and shrimp and may also catch fish if they're able to. They pounce on its prey, grabbing it with their arms and pulling it towards its mouth. It introduces the venom piercing through the exoskeleton and sucks the fish from the crustacean's exoskeleton. Hey folks, we're in Australia today with another special episode of Species Report. We encourage you again to use your imagination as you enjoy our video. Today, we present to you the Paper Nautilus. The Paper Nautilus, genus Argonauta, is an animal that has not been seen very often in its natural habitat. Although its range is wide, including tropical and semi-tropical waters, it is extremely rare to see in the wild. Their presence is known through dissections of apex predators whose stomachs contain nautilus remains. Mass strandings on beaches also prove that they are out there. Today, we are lucky to have found a live paper nautilus in the tropical waters of Australia. Here we have the Argonaut, or as most people know, the paper nautilus. As you can see, it is famous 
for his transparent shell. This shell is actually used as a brooding chamber for the female's eggs. However, this shell also helps this relative of the octopus stay buoyant in the water. Unlike the actual nautilus, there is no septa or division of chambers. Rather, the paper nautilus fills the shell with small amount of air. Scientists are finding that the animal actually has some control of buoyancy. However, in contrast, to other octopuses, the paper nautilus swims near the ocean surface. When going after prey, which include the crustaceans, mollusks, and a jellyfish, the paper nautilus uses its tentacles to pull the prey towards its beak. The prey is then injected with poison from the salivary glands. When the paper nautilus is being preyed upon, it is able to blend with its environment using chromatophores in its skin. Now you see it, now you don't. Looking into the future, we must consider the environmental changes the paper nautilus is going to face. Ocean acidification may be more of a threat to the paper nautilus than other cephalopods. Why? This is the because the paper nautilus lacks organic porostracum or protective covering on its calcite shell. In addition, it is one of the thinnest shells in the marine environment. Recent experiments with the nautilus shell shows the warmer temperatures and low levels of pH will reduce the structural integrity of the shell. Hello folks, today Durrani and I are going to be talking about cephalopod reproduction. A few things you need to know about cephalopods is that they are different from other mollusks and that they are both uh, male and female. They are dioecious, which means they are not hermaphroditic. Um, the male is known for, known for his uh, Hetacotylus, which is a sperm packet at the end of his tentacle. Basically what he does with that is he extends it into the female's mantle, as seen here, removes it, and the female keeps the sperm inside her mantle. Uh, the eggs are then fertilized, and after fertilization, um, in, the term, in the case of the paper nautilus, um, there's brooding that occurs, and the paper nautilus will basically use its shell to take care of the eggs until they hatch as juveniles. Um, this is a little bit different than other mollusks in that there is no um, larval stage. Uh, basically, once the eggs hatch, they are ready to, to grow into their adult form as time goes on. Uh, in the case of the blue-ringed octopus, uh, the animal also broods, but instead of having a shell, uh, it actually carries it underneath its body with its tentacles. Uh, Durrani is also going to mention one of our friends. So we would really like to thank Saurabh Singh who helped us videotape our projects and also did the narration. And thank you all for listening and watching our videos. Thank you.